This is Lionel Hutz, a.k.a. Miguel Sanchez, a.k.a. Dr. Nguyen Von Falk. He is Springfield's most accomplished and successful lawyer. At least that's what he would tell you. In reality, Mr. Hutz achieves the rare combination of being both unethical and incompetent. He stretches all the legal conventions in trying to win, but usually ends up losing anyway. Probably because he has no idea what he's doing. Or forgets to wear pants. Or ran over the judge's son. Really, you could pick any of these explanations. In addition to his legal practice, Lionel Hutz offers his services as a babysitter or realtor. Which is great, because his clients will probably need a lawyer after he's done. But at the very least, they will be entertained with many memorable moments. He is very good at providing those. This is the history of Lionel Hutz. Alright, Lionel Hutz will be a fun character to look at, especially right after looking at Troy McClure. Both of Phil Hartman's characters definitely share some qualities in their characterization over the years. They both are certainly associated with Dr. Nick. But in terms of actual function, they are polar opposites. It took Troy McClure seven years to meet the Simpsons. Lionel Hutz is almost always interacting with them. He really gets entrenched in the plot. So let's go back and look at how he was used in these different stories, and how they managed to keep him so fresh and so quotable for so many seasons. Lionel Hutz first appeared in Season 2's nonsensically titled episode, Bart Gets Hit by a Car. He chases after Bart's ambulance and represents them in their lawsuit against Mr. Burns. He originally started out as simply a caricature of the shady, crooked, personal injury lawyer. We all know this kind of stereotype by now. The sort of lawyer who would exaggerate the injuries and overestimate the financial damages. Lisa literally asks him if he's a shyster in the episode. Season 2 did not portray Hutz as being particularly incompetent. Back then it was more about tacky promotional products and general dodgy behavior. Remember, it wasn't his stupidity that lost this case, it was Marge's honesty. We get a much more vanilla and subdued portrayal in Old Money, when he's the executor of B. Simmons' will. He makes a joke about a haunted house, but otherwise does his job with his usual enthusiasm. Season 3 expanded upon this by giving us tiny little glimpses that maybe this guy doesn't know what he's doing. But just glimpses for now. For example, in Bart the Murderer, he's not exactly messing up the legal terms or asking ridiculously dumb questions, he just wants to know if he still gets paid. In Flaming Moe's, he looks sort of impressed that his books behind him are full of useful legal tidbits. The later Huts would never bother with books, whereas this version still at least tries to be helpful. But oh boy, season 4. Here's where everything changes with this character, where I think he gets fully formed. Here's where they add that extra layer of silliness to Lionel Huts. It's not just about observational jokes about the law. We get something like the Seafood Buffet lawsuit, where he gets attached to an inherently silly argument. He'll sue the never-ending story for false advertising, for example. In addition, the way he practices law and his general ineffectiveness becomes even more absurd. This is really his bread and butter as a character, what we all remember him for. He'll scream, run out of the room, and leave behind shredded newspapers. He'll try to steal Aunt Gladys' money with a terrible audio dubbing. He'll start working a case from within a jail cell. Hmm. I guess I forgot to mention that his shadiness also gets ramped up around this time. Season 4 contains, in my opinion, Lionel Hutz's greatest performance ever, in Marge and Chains. He just absolutely kills it in this episode. It's like the only reason they made this story was to fill Act 2 full of amazing Hutz material. The rest? Eh. Give me more of this guy. We've got the smoking monkey, Hutz mentioning he ran over Judge Snyder's son, repeatedly. We've got the brownest of brown liquors, we've got David Crosby, we have the necktie joke. The world without lawyers, him showing up without pants, the bad court thingy, the law talking guy, trying to change the verdict, misspelling the verdict. Yes, I realize I am literally just listing jokes at this point, something I try not to do. But when researching this project, I just couldn't get over how many classic Huts lines this thing is filled with. You should rewatch it, this part is so great. Honestly, if I had to pinpoint Lionel Hutz's quote unquote heyday, it would be seasons 4 and 5, spanning two different showrunner regimes. Season 4 contained six different roles for Lionel Hutz, and then season 5 continued that trend with six more. That's about 25% of the episodes over two years. Pretty good for a guest star and one character. 
Season 5 tended to be more of the same regarding his lawyer jokes. They mostly focused on putting him in new crazy situations, like being in a Treehouse of Horror segment. Or when doing something more traditional, becoming more self-aware and consciously questioning why they keep hiring him. This was a good decision in terms of their timing. We had reached the point where we could start lampshading this pattern. We actually don't know a lot about Lionel Hutz's life outside his profession. We saw him in a play in Season 4, but that's about it. Season 5 treated us to a couple peeks at who this guy really is. We hear about how he's a real user of women. We also get to see him become a babysitter for the Simpson family. This B-plot in particular has got to be the most desperate Lionel Hutz has ever been portrayed, changing his name to Miguel Sanchez and burning all his belongings. Honestly, it's a really nice change of pace for this guy. It's fun seeing him in a new setting, and is a nice opportunity to escalate some of his earlier jokes about his vices. By now, I totally buy that this guy would be that desperate for $8. After this point, however, Lionel Hutz's appearances tended to be more brief and stereotypical. Like in Sideshow Bob Roberts, he barely even tries and immediately asks the kids for help. We don't see much of his lawsuit over the Krustios and Round Springfield, we just get a short and sweet joke about his ridiculous legal fees. In the Springfield connection, we go straight to another joke about him burning stuff. I like all these jokes still, but it's clear they didn't want to overdo it with him and devote a lot of time to recycling a concept. I think that's fair. They pushed him pretty hard for two whole seasons. There's an interesting phenomenon with the Merkin years we just discussed and the Oakley and Weinstein era, seasons 7 and 8. Merkin barely used Troy McClure at all and instead highlighted Lionel Hutz, whereas Oakley and Weinstein gave Troy a spotlight episode and specials, but then Hutz could barely get any lines. He shows up briefly in Radioactive Man as Milhouse's drug dealer keeper aware, and appears as a cameo in 22 short films about Springfield. And he doesn't have any speaking roles in season 8. None. He appears in backgrounds, but otherwise he gets completely shut out. He does, however, have season 7's The Day the Violence Died, so maybe it's all okay. Actually, this one kind of feels like a sequel to Margin Chains, really showing off Lionel Hutz in Act 2. It's not as flawless as the earlier example, but it does give us stuff like his list of surprise witnesses and his argument that hearsay and conjecture are kinds of evidence. Maybe after season 5 his usage did fall off considerably, but I'm glad this era of the show at least gave him one time to shine. Basically the same thing could be said for season 9. Yeah, he's in Lisa the Skeptic, but it's clear that Realty Bites was designed to be our big dose of huts for the year. Now I'm going to be up front right here. I'm not a fan of Lionel Hutz in this specific role. It's not bad by any means, it's just one of his less fun appearances, in my opinion. Which is kind of a shame, because it's his last speaking role in the entire series. Now to their credit, the idea of Hutz being a realtor is a cool idea. He has that slickness, that deceptiveness, where you could imagine him being a shifty realtor type. I really like this scene of him describing crappy homes to Marge. I'm totally on board conceptually. It's just his aggressiveness feels a little weird, the way they have him constantly beat up on poor Gil and threatens to fire Marge. We hadn't seen something like this since his outburst back in Bark Gets Hit by a Car. I think what always worked about Lionel Hutz as a character is his constant cheerfulness and enthusiasm as he fails miserably or cheats people out of their money. That juxtaposition was always the key. I'm not going to say I hate the edge to this particular role, it's just not quite as fun as his other stuff. Maybe this is all Gil's fault for being such a pushover. A lot of people cite The Principal and the Pauper as the end of the classic era of The Simpsons, but I wonder if there's a case for Realty Bites. Not only as Lionel Hutz's last speaking role, but it does kind of feel like he's passing the torch to new characters right here. Gil went on to replace Hutz in many legal cases became the sort of stand-in for a desperate random working type. Obviously a very different kind of character, but used for similar purposes. And then there's Cookie Kwan, who also makes her first appearance right here. I like Cookie Kwan, I think she's a little underappreciated to be honest, but I always think of her as one of those post-classic folks, you know? 
we need a support group for those quote-unquote new guys who have actually been on the show for over 20 years. Much like with Troy McClure, I think the writers made the right call in retiring Lionel Hutz after Phil Hartman's death. This is another case where it just wouldn't have been the same with a sound-alike or another voice actor. It's interesting looking at Troy McClure and Lionel Hutz back-to-back, because they both do highlight how much enthusiasm and energy Phil Hartman brought to his characters. I don't care if Lionel Hutz is sometimes a terrible and conniving person, he's so charming and fun. I just want to see more of him. Marge keeps wondering why they keep hiring him. I would say it's because they can't resist his charm. Also because the Simpsons are constantly broke. That's a good reason too. Probably the biggest compliment you could give to Lionel Hutz as a character was that his heyday was right smack in the middle of those classic years. It really is a shame that his usage fell off so much in the later seasons that they sort of burned him out. But to be an integral part of seasons 4 and 5? Well, that's a good place to be. Lionel Hutz was a big contributor to why those seasons turned out as good as they were. An otherwise mediocre episode gets propped up considerably by the services of Mr. Lionel Hutz. He's like a performing enhancing character for any story. Before we go, one last little note about Phil Hartman's characters. As a rule, the writers tended to avoid using both Lionel Hutz and Troy McClure in the same episode. It makes sense. You could argue these similar voices might become a distraction. There's definitely a difference in intonation with the deliveries, but you probably wouldn't want these two characters talking to each other. However, there are seven episodes that feature both of them in speaking roles. We'll call them the Phil Hartman Seven. They are Bart the Murderer, a streetcar named Marge, Marge Gets a Job, Selma's Choice, Duffless, Marge in Chains, and Marge on the Lamb. Weird. A bunch of them are Marge episodes. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Lionel Hutz jokes are. There are so many to choose from, so many great lines. Let's see if you can come up with one favorite. One quote to rule them all. Personally, I'm going with the brownest of brown liquors. Also, keep those votes coming for the next Simpsons Histories candidate. I'll keep all the suggestions in the last video in mind, since we ended up doing two back to back. I've been hitting up the guest stars a lot lately, so maybe we should save Saijabab for later and feature one of the main voice cast. Maybe old Gil will finally get his moment in the sun. He's been sending me messages for months asking for one of these. I'll eventually call him back. As always, thanks for watching.